He's risen. He is risen indeed. First, I hope that things are going well with you. I know it's difficult to shelter in place and hopefully you're staying healthy and, and indoors and looking forward to conclusion to this thing uh, down the line. But on this glorious morning, I wanna share with you a few thoughts about that first Easter. Now I know in the four gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, there are various accounts uh, about the story and it starts on Friday when Jesus, of course, dies on the cross, and then he's buried, and then uh, he raises uh, from the dead on that Sunday morning, three days later, as he said he would do. But the question I want to start with this morning is this. What did the first Easter have in common with Easter 2020? Well, everyone is sheltering. Everyone's hiding. Everyone is indoors. Why? Because we're fearful fearful of, you know, in the time of Jesus, they were certainly fearful of the Jewish leadership and the, and the Romans. But today it's the coronavirus that keeps us uh, indoors. And so we know that a few went to the tomb that morning to, to see Jesus, but just a few because everyone else was hiding or, or sheltering. And it's interesting, the most significant event uh, in the Christian faith, the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the grave, was a nondescript moment in a remote part of the world, which seemingly had little or nothing to do with the global politics of that day. Does that sound familiar? Well, possibly. You know, the world goes on, but Jesus Christ did something phenomenal that shaped the entire world for the next 2,000 years and certainly beyond. So, listen to this. Churches are empty today because people are sheltering in place. People are fearful. But let me say this, the tomb of Jesus was also empty. And thanks be to God for that, right? That Jesus Christ rose from the dead. So what is the impact of the resurrection? Well, first and foremost, it takes away the fear of death. And the apostle Paul writes about this in his first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 15, verses 51 to 57. And I want to read this to you because it's important to understand what I'm talking about when I say he took away the fear of death. Paul writes, listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed in a flash, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, the dead will uh, be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. For the perishable must clothe itself with the imperishable and the mortal with immortality. And when the perishable has be, been clothed with the imperishable and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh, death, is your victory? Where, O oh, death, is your sting? Now listen to verse 56. The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. You see, when Jesus rose from the dead, he overcame the grave. He overcame death, and it took the sting of death away. We have nothing to fear because our Lord is not dead. He lives, and he lives for us for all time. You know, we all know death's inevitable. We know that. Romans chapter 6, verse 23 says, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. So what is the importance of the resurrection for you? Eternal life. That God gives you after death eternal life with him where there is no more death. That we'll be in God's wonderful presence forever. So how is this possible? How is it possible that we can receive this gift? You know, there's a passage in John 3, 16, which we all know. And it says this, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him, whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have what? Eternal life. You see, your faith in the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ seals that deal for you. It gives you the gift of eternal life through faith in Jesus Christ. You know, the next two verses in John 3, 16, 17 and 18 says this, God did not, send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already. Why? Because they have not believed in the name 
of God's one and only Son. You see, the gift of everlasting life is received by faith in Jesus Christ who died on the cross and rose to give us the gift of eternal life. Now, the narrative in, in the Gospels is important about this moment with this guy named Doubting Thomas. You know, Jesus appeared to the disciples off and on throughout uh, and after the resurrection. But a week later, um, a week later, Jesus appears uh, to the group in the upper room where Thomas is finally there. And in John 20, 24 to 29, it says this, and it's important for you to hear this on this Easter morning. Now, Thomas, also known as Didymus the twin, one of the 12 was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, look, unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. So a week later, his disciples were in the house again and Thomas was with them. And though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them. And he said, peace be with you. Peace be with you. And then he said to Thomas, Thomas, put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Stop doubting and believe. Stop doubting and believe. And Thomas said to him, my Lord and my God. My Lord and my God. And then Jesus told him, because you've seen me, you believe. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Isn't that powerful? You know, I've, I've never seen Jesus in, in the physical flesh, but I've seen him in my spirit. I've, I've seen him through my faith because the Holy Spirit convicts me to know that what I am sharing with you is absolutely true. So where, where do you stand in this? Do you see? Do you believe? Do you have the gift, the gift of eternal life? that God wants to give you because it's available through faith in Jesus Christ. You know, in Ephesians 2, 8, 9, it says, by grace, we are saved through faith, not works, but it's a gift of God, a gift of God given to us. So my prayer for you on this Easter morning is that the Holy Spirit will empower you to fully embrace the love of God through Jesus Christ today and always, and that his peace will fill you and cover you. And look, if you haven't made that step of transition to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, then this morning is the time to do it. I would not let the sun set today without declaring Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. And I want to just repeat to you the words of the Apostles' Creed, not written by the Apostles, but written you know, several hundred years later as an expression of, of the succinct fundaments of the Christian faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty and will come again to judge both the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. That is the faith of the fathers. That's my faith in a triune God, a God who created the Father, a God who redeemed the Son, a God who empowers and seals it, the Holy Spirit. And it's my prayer today that you'll receive the fullness of God's love for you through his Son, Jesus Christ, and let the Holy Spirit uh, em empower this Seal this in you, that you will know with absolute certainty that death has no victory over you. The sting of death is gone, and the gift of God is eternal life. So have a blessed Easter. And I just invite you to share this message with others. If there's some people that you know that need to hear what I've just shared with you, then I encourage you to share it with them, that they also may be blessed. He's risen. He's risen indeed. Amen.